Senator, tell me where you first came up with this idea. In uh, essence, I came up with when I served in the Colorado legislature, where your party was not so important as your ideas. And in our committees, we would sit wherever we wanted to. And I made a point of sitting with Republicans to get to know them, to get better ideas from them, and to work together. When I was in the U.S. House, I also made a habit of sitting on the Republican side during votes and during debate, just to get to know uh, members of the other party. You just never know when you, you need to work with somebody. Did you have any idea that your little idea was going to take no, off like this? No idea, but I think why it has is because the American people hold this as an idea. And we're just channeling, uh, if you will, their belief uh, in our system of government and their desire, their deep desire, even their hunger for us to work together. And then this is also tied to what happened in Tucson. Not in the sense of apportioning blame, but I think we all know the rhetoric's been over the top here and we've had private conversations among all of us about it and this was just a warning. This was a chance to turn uh, back the dial, to reset. And look, this is one evening, it's a few hours, but the symbolism here is important and, I, and I'm hopeful that it'll lead to some real legislative and policy product that'll move the country forward. How do you think that that can happen? Well, I think the overarching job for us is to focus on the economy and job creation. And if we keep that in our mind's eye, and we know that uh, our fellow members of the Senate or members of the House, in the end, are Americans, and hold this as, a, as, as an important mission for us, I, I have to know that it'll, it'll lead to uh, it's a real work product that will make us make, make a difference. It's one step. Hopefully you'll, I mean, this is an exciting night. It's one of those nights you remember. And you remember you sat with so-and-so. You sat in the vicinity of, of people maybe you don't know that well. I, I think it'll, it'll have a carryover effect. I really do. A lot of members are really excited about this. They've obviously, obviously put a lot of <laughs> thought into who they're going to be taking with them to the yeah. State of the Union. On the other hand, you have some members who are calling it a gimmick. Yeah. Some who say it's a democratic trap. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? It's, it's predictable. Look, we have 535 people plus the delegates in the Congress and a lot of opinions and I can see some people who would have that reaction. Good, good for them. But if you look at the broad embrace of it, Senator Coburn to uh, Tony Weiner to the Speaker now going to sit with uh, uh, Congressman Bartlett from Maryland who's a favorite of mine. He's a scientist. He's a brainiac. Uh, I think that speaks much more loudly than the, than the few discordant voices. Again, I respectfully uh, disagree with them, but they, they can sit where they would like to sit, and, and it's a free country, it's a free Congress. The House chamber is a, in some days a free-for-all. Do you think that this is going to change the entire nature of the State of the Union address? I mean, it's so well known for one side of the room getting up and cheering and the other side sitting on their hands. I, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I do think it'll change the way in which we do our work this year and next. And there's no better time to seize this opportunity. If we can't sit together, as a, how can we expect to work together on the on really significant challenges facing the country? You said you were motivated by the tragedy in Tucson? I, I, I was, and I, I think we all have been really uh, touched by it, to put it mildly. Uh, many of us know Gabby Giffords. Many of us know what a spirited legislator she is. Many of us know what a pragmatist uh, she is, and somebody looked for common ground. I also have a connection to her in, in this way. My father represented Arizona in the U.S. House. His district was much like Congresswoman Gifford's district. She and I are born at the same hospital. We share the same passions about issues, the renewable energy, the armed services, aerospace. And so I, I think that uh, people felt like this was a wake-up call for, for all of us. Uh, that we're here for all the best of reasons, even those of us that are far away, far apart on the political spectrum. So I, mm -hmm. it's a way to pay tribute to Gabby. Uh, in, in symbolic ways, but also we go back to work and work uh, on, the, on the economy, on job creation. It would make her proud, make us proud. And so it's, it's, it's heartfelt for me uh, what's happened in Arizona. Do you think that this is a one-time thing, or are you hoping it's going to happen? I, let's see forever. how it goes tonight. I, I, th I think uh, you'll see it continue going forward, but that's just one person's prediction. Because uh, You know why? Because I think it'll work, people have fun and then it'll result in us uh, being better legislators and, and, and working on behalf of the country. It doesn't mean we're not going to disagree. It's not going to mean we're going to have heated debates, but maybe just enough of a change in the tone. So let's disagree. Let's battle. Let's compete over ideas and direction. 
but let's not be so disagreeable about it. It doesn't serve anybody's interests. It really doesn't. I think the voters last fall, they said in my state, three things. Focus on the economy, focus on debt reduction, and work together, doggone it. And that may be a gentle way of saying what they were saying to us. I think there was even a stronger statement about wanting us to work together.